Let's get this party started. Thank you. 
guys from Mel David. Welcome to Ship Selection Night 2014. Hope we had a great night ahead of us. And I know, looking forward to getting off the program, so I'll get right to business. And then as our guest speaker, Vice Admiral Tom Copeland, Commander of Naval Service Forces. Admiral Copeland's had a very distinguished career. I'd say his commands included USS Benfold, KG-65, which is Star Squadron 28, where he deployed as Sea Combat Commander with George Washington Air Striker. He went in Gulf and supported operations in Iraq and even deployed freedom. Ashore, he has served in a variety of key staff positions, including Director, Navy Center Liaison, and the Office of Legislative Affairs, Chief of Staff for the Naval Service Forces, Deputy Chief of Staff for Operations and Training for the U.S. Pacific Fleet, Commander Joint Task Force Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, and most recently Chief of Legislative Affairs. He's here tonight to help us celebrate this unique Naval Academy event. He will lead us, bearing witness to this important personal and professional milestone. Lives of our newest proud of the future service for our first year officers. So, thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule. Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Admiral Coleman. I will go on back to the flight there. I know that there's a lot of anxiety about getting started here, and I will keep my remarks down to about 55 minutes. I've rehearsed it a number of times, and I promise it won't be any longer than that. Um, unless we get into sea storage, and we'll take questions afterwards, and eventually we'll get to this. No, you don't want to get Okay, all right. Get the wave off. <laughs> From my own side down here. Um, and thanks for a kind introduction. Um, this is my second time I've been here. I didn't make it last year because of sequestration and travel restrictions. I've shared the year before, which was the first time I've been here. It was pretty, pretty interesting and very, very much different than. My experience at the Officer Candidates School in 1982 when a senior chief barked at us to go by grab the name of a ship on a popsicle stick and hand it to the line of one and get back to work. <laughs> this is a much, much better way of doing this. Um, I, I think it's pretty exciting because, you know, as we discussed at the table, and I think all the old sea dogs in here will be able to uh, affirm if as the night wears on, your first ship is going to be very, very special to you. You're going to remember it for the rest of your life, and I, you know, and I don't care whether it's a good experience. Or a bad experience. It's mostly going to be good memories, I'll tell you that. Uh, my best friends in the Navy, my lifelong friends, were all from my first ship, USS Lefwich. And uh, I'm the only one left still hanging around on active duty, but we get together and it's a brotherhood uh, that I think will never be broken. So uh, I got to tell you, it, it makes it pretty exciting to go up there and, and see these, these ships up there. And you, you're going to remember them forever. You remember the, the bonds that you made. Um, I decided very early on to be a surface warfare officer. It's kind of our family business. Um, my grandfather was a swallow, my dad was a swallow, and I'm a swallow. Um, and so it's always been uh, very enticing to me to go to sea. And I'll tell you, there's nothing better to me. And I still I, I trade places with you right now, except for the pay cards. Um, <laughs> to go back to sea again and, and give up my, uh, my short down desk job that I have right now, um, you're going to be very, very lucky. Um, today, the United States Navy, uh, the surface Navy in particular, is existential to the United States Navy. And we have been since the very first day this republic was founded. Um, there's a lot of navies out there in the world. There's a few of them that have aircraft carriers and a few of them that have submarines. But there's none of them that are out there that calls themselves a navy that don't have surface ships that will remain existential to the United States Navy, no matter what happens to the rest of the fleet or the rest of the budgets. And we do a very, very important job keeping the sea lines of communication open across the world controlling the ocean seas, and we're out there when we need to be here. And so it's a very, very important, it's very difficult to be, to get trained up and be good in our profession. Um, and you'll, you'll be faced with a lot of hard work in the next couple of years. Um, and what's unique about surface warfare, I think, for most of you sitting here, and uh, a little less than probably three or four months after you graduate, you're going to be standing on the deck of a ship uh, talking to a group of people that you're charged with leading. Well, the rest of your compatriots are probably TDY and sitting and waiting to get flight school started or going to get their power school. And by the time they're able to get in the first ship, you'll probably have one or two deployments on your belt uh, and a bunch of, bunch of really, really good experiences in leadership. So it's really something to look forward to. I've enjoyed every single minute of it. Uh, I've been doing this for 32 years, and it's been fantastic. And I really do wish I could trade places with you. Um, the responsibilities of these engines and JGs, I think, will exceed anything that your peers in the civilian community have gone to, even the, the highest powered Ivy League schools and business schools will experience for a long, long time to come for them. And you're going to be pressed immediately into the role of being leaders with men and women that you might have to, on a very short moment's notice on deployment, lead into a, lead into a battle or lead into a space that might have been damaged. So it's, it's very, very unique, I think, for uh, 
it's a group of people of your age and inexperienced to get out there very, very quickly. Um, there's a couple of other talk to this very briefly. There's a couple of LCSs up there. A couple of people asked me about them. We have four instances on them. Uh, you'll have two other people on the bridge on watch with you, and one other person on the entire ship on watch with you. So if you weren't thinking about an LCS, you might want to think, because you're not doing orders, you're doing it. You're just driving a ship with a little joystick. It's kind of a cool ship. It's our newest one. The Freedom just completed its first time on deployment. Uh, the Coronado just sailed away this week, and uh, that's the fourth one. And we're going to start doing four a year. So if you hadn't thought about that in the past, I know there's a few of them up there, and I can I think somebody on my table will maybe think about it, but we'll see. I got his list here for me. It's pretty high, up, so if anybody wants to know what his list is, let me know. So, um, finally, um, there's a lot of issues that we face. You can't open up a newspaper and talk about the budget pressures that we face in the United States Navy. But I think at the end of the day, um, the surface Navy is a very, very good bargain for the American taxpayer. We make up 73% of the commission ships in the United States Navy. Uh, we are the preponderance of the deployed forces around the world, and we consume a grand total of 11% of the United States Department of the Navy's budget. So we're a heck of a good deal. We provide a lot of combat punch. We provide a lot of options for the president and the command authorities out there. I mean, I'll stop talking now because I know you guys want to get up there and start talking about this. This is any questions that you got. Okay. Thank you. Now we have the number one order of merit among small selectees, Midshipman Bryn Lombok. Simpson. Next to pick, it's Justin just in chalk. Shots to make services closing. Next up, the chip and Audrey Petro. Into the train, so I exclude this muscle and let it be crossed at Japan. Up next, it's a bit Brian Fritz. It's a bit Fritz, so I exclude this Donald Cook and a hard of Spain. to select Mitchell Samuel Dodson. Mitchell Dodson selects them set for a leader out of Main Law Bahrain. Did you pick? I picked the Samson that I needed. Do you want it to out of San Diego? Okay, and now, uh, what, what was your choice about why did you pick that one? It was 
sort process, so a lot of great ports to choose from. Um, I decided on San Diego because of a uh, bunch of my fiance is a DOD officer, and so we're trying to find the best way to coordinate our uh, schedules. And I absolutely love California and just need the, the warm climate. And then I had an awesome experience on the Chalky this past summer, so uh, I went to see the destroyer and they set up for a harbor, so I was set on a destroyer. Okay. And um, how does your family feel about it? Are they excited? They're very excited. I know they're watching right now. So this is a big night for all of us. <laughs> okay. Well, congratulations. Take care. Thank you. Kevin Carol Fisher. <laughs> and Kevin Fisher selects us as Fitzgerald in the first match of the game. Next up, the Jim and Polly Gesson. The Jim and Gesson selects USS Essex out of San Diego. Next to pick, the Jim and Lindsay Darling. Jimmy Darling selects USS Iwo Jima out of Edward, Florida. Up next, the Jimmy Patrick McAllister. The Jimmy McAllister selects USS William B. Lawrence out of San Diego, California. Next to select, the Jimmy General River. Jimmy River selects USS Michael Murphy out of Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Next up, the Jimmy Caleb Trugowski. The Jimmy Trugowski selects USS JV out of Pearl Harbor. Up next, the Jimmy Aaron Fortner. The Jim and Porter selects This is Donald Cook out of Road of Spain. Next to pick, the Jim and Brett Mason. The Jim and Mason selects This is Curtis Lover out of the Coast of Japan.
sure their families are taking care of those kind of challenges or what make them any. We call it an any family, don't we? And, and it's absolutely true. And so if we've done our jobs here, when they leave the Naval Academy, they will find that they've got a family on their ship, and it will be as important to them as the families that they have back home. Speaking on that, what is it about the Naval Academy that prepares them for those challenges? Now we've got a, a, a pretty rigorous four-year program here, and, uh, and, but I think in the, the morally, mentally, and physically, our students are immersed in this for four years, some for five, and in that process, they, they kind of come to know themselves. And I think anybody that you talk to, whether it's your parents or their friends, will say, you know, they went in like all of us were just kids, and you grow so much in the Naval Academy because it gives you the opportunity not just to learn how to succeed, but it gives you a chance to fail and to learn from your mistakes and to, and to get back up, dust yourself off, and figure out how we're going to defend America for the future because there are no points for second place where in the business that they're going to go into. Very true. And this is something we asked Admiral Copeland as well. Uh, what advice do you have for these I think you take every day as a gift, and you, you, you should be, we are so proud of them, as I know everybody is listening, we are so very proud of them, but, the, uh, but you take every day as a gift with the expectation that the best is going to happen, and I'll tell you what, if you go in life that way, in, in our day today, there's every reason to expect that there's going to be a great sunrise and another great sunset. There's nothing like the sunrise at sea. Yes, and, and or, or sunset, it doesn't matter, it's, it's all good. Okay, well, thank you so much for spending some time with us tonight. Now, uh, let's go over to Petty Officer Timberlake. Thank you, Petty Officer Wells. Let's take a look at what Admiral Browning, the uh, Director of Surface Warfare, has to say about ship selection night. We do sea patrol. That's what we do in surface warfare. And the men and women that are going to be graduating from the Naval Academy this year, they're going to be selecting their ships. Uh, they're going to be part of a huge, huge, um, they're going to be a huge, huge part of what it is we do for the men and women that walk down the streets every day. They never even realize what it is we do when we control the sea. And uh, our Navy controls the sea, and surface warfare's contribution is front and center of that. Well, Admiral Browning, you mentioned that you Joshua Hildebrand. Selects was a spell of golf out of Norfolk, Virginia. Next to select, it should be Audrey Bauer. It should be Bauer selects Liz 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 Someone is going to be the first. Next to pick, it should be Alexander Vaughn. It should be Vaughn selects USS Roosevelt out of Midport, Florida. Look now, it should be Juliana Everest. I'm here with Rear Admiral from the Tautau, who is Commander Naval Service Force Atlantic. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Oh, you're very welcome. I see my wills. And what advice do you have for these future surface warfare officers uh, as they begin their journey into the fleet tonight? Well, first of all, I want them to celebrate this moment because it works so hard to get to this place and then. More importantly, they made a very tough decision on what community they wanted to serve, and choosing surface warfare is an awesome decision, and they're going to learn so much about leadership from the first day they step on board. So my advice to them would be uh, to do the same type of rigor that they did to get them through the academy. Work hard, do the right thing, listen to your chief, chief petty officer, and most importantly, most importantly, I think in the Naval Academy, they build uh, leaders, and leaders lead teams, build the team in whatever division you're assigned to, and they just go out and have fun. Very sound advice. 
Next to Beck, the German Trent Wayne. The German Lane selects us as Jonas McKay, and then goes to Japan. Next up, the German. I'm here with Commander Tom Dickinson from USS Barry. Sir, how do you feel about being here tonight? Uh, tonight's a great Saturday night. Uh, you know, last time I was here in 1995 when I picked my first ship, and you can see the excitement on the faces of uh, the midshipmen here. Same things I felt. Wow, the coach is running three inches straight in the crew. Okay. And um, what are you looking forward to most about having these new officers on board your ship? Well, I'm excited to meet to greet them and to explain to them what my ship is about and what they have to look forward to. 
USS Farragut out of Big War, Florida. Up now, it should be John Fowles. It should be Fowles, like USS Wayne Meyer out of San Diego, California. Up now, it should be James Thomas. With me, I have Captain Welch, who is representing the Surface Warfare Community tonight, LCS. Yes. And what does this night mean to you, sir? Well, it's it's an exciting time for surface warfare to realize that there's 243 midship, and this is the future, the next generation of leadership in our surface community. And to realize that they're taking, this represents their next step in their professional development. And uh, in a matter of months, every single man and woman walking across that stage is going to be on board a ship leading uh, the sailors of our great name. That's pretty exciting to think about. And, and it's also exciting to see older people like me come back. And, and so it's the past. It's, it's us coming together in the present, and we can also see into the future of where our community is going. What was this night like for you? It was a little bit different. Uh, there weren't any microphones. There weren't any cameras. Nobody did those kind of interviews. The process itself was pretty similar. Once we selected for surface warfare, we kind of did it all in one night. So you went from one big line, and then you got on the surface warfare line. And then we went into one of the uh, malls, Memorial Hall, and we got the same big board, and you walked up and picked your first ship, which is which a pretty exciting moment uh, in the life for a young small kid. What made you choose this local community? And I grew up in Peoria, Illinois, the world's most average city in the middle of the country. And so as I began to think about it and investigate joining the Navy, the first pictures that I saw, the first things I thought about were ships, destroyers. Uh, and so throughout my time here at the Naval Academy, I kept coming back to that. It's what I knew uh, when I pictured the Navy as a young team. Uh, and it's what I keep getting back to and, and the opportunity to drive ships it was always exciting to me, and the chance to lead people early on was something that really appealed to me. What do these midshipmen have to look forward to as soon as they privilege up to this building and report to their ship? Well, they've been here learning leadership. They get the, the chance to apply what they've learned the moment they step on board their first ship. So they're, they're almost immediately within a, a week or so, they're standing in front of a division and work center and they're leading sailors. And that's a big responsibility. Uh, they also get the chance to learn on board the most technologically advanced ships uh, in the world. And, and so and one of the other great benefits to being a swallow, and it starts on day one and it continues, in my case, for 27 years, is the chance to learn something new every day. And that's a great opportunity. What advice do you have for them? I build on what I just said. Uh, always have an insatiable sense of professional curiosity. Every time you step aboard the ship, every time uh, you get a chance to stand in front of sailors and learn something, those sailors are great technicians and leaders in their own right. And, and 
they can teach these young officers and help them develop and grow. Uh, and the other thing I would say is just remember uh, this night and remember this place that they came from. They have taken it off and they have accepted a commission and from day one they are officers in the United States Navy. That's a tremendous responsibility. It's a tremendous uh, privilege and pleasure. Thank you so much for spending some time with us tonight, sir. Thank you very much. All right, we're going to go over to Patty Officer Timberlake now. I'm here with Midshipman First Class Madrid and Wilk. What is, uh, first of all, what ships did you guys get? I just picked the USS Mustang Destroyer. I'm the USS Kitchen Man. I just picked the USS Paul Jones, which is now being teleported in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. All right. Um, what did you pick that ship? Uh, I was able to spend last summer in Japan. I uh, really felt love in the country. I'm excited to go out. Uh, we're allowed to actually be able to form deployed forces. What about you? Has been a uh, combat system, and I'm really excited to test it out and try new things. Okay, and what are you guys looking forward to most about being slows and getting out there in the fleet? I'm looking forward to, uh, to having people in the lead, uh, sailors, sailors, and sailors. I'm looking forward to traveling a lot, and we'll be making a lot of port calls all over the Pacific. I'm looking forward to making a difference in the lives of the people I'm leading. Thank you so much, guys, for being with us, and we're going to go back inside. Jim and Joel selects Mrs. Hopper as Pearl Harbor Hawaii. Up now, Mrs. Benjamin Walters. Jim and Walter selects as his Millie instead of San Diego, California. Next to select Mitchum and Madeline McFarland. Mitchum and McFarland selects as his shoe out of Everett, Washington. Next to select Mitchum and Carlin Christopher. Jim and Christopher selects USS Spruance out of San Diego, California. Next to pick, Mitchum and Melissa Kim. Mitchum and Kim selects USS New Orleans out of San Diego, California. Select, currently selecting Mitchum and Alexa Rizzo. Mitchum and Rizzo selects you as a sponsor out of San Diego. Next up, Mitchum and Gabriella Scherer. Mitchum and Scherer selects you as a sprintly out of San Diego, California. Next to pick, Mitchum and Gabriela Torres. Mitchum and Torres selects you as a speed bridge out of Norfolk, Virginia. Next up, Mitchum and Ryan Dallas. Just a shallow looking across the country. Next to pick, Mitchum and Neil McMillan. Mitchum and McMillan picks USA Stockdale in San Diego, California. Next up, Mitchum and Kelsey Shabak. Jim and Shabak selects USS Lady Golf of Norfolk, Virginia. Next up, Jim and Eric Fountain. Jim 
So with that, Selexio is just doing it in San Diego, California. Next to pick, Benjamin Allen on. Benjamin Allen selects USS Blue Ridge out of the Across Country Band. Next to select, Benjamin Kelly Ball. Benjamin Hall selects you as a Shiloh and a Coast Winter fan. Next up, Benjamin Alexandra Lynch. Benjamin Lynch selects you as a New Orleans and a San Diego, California. Up now, Benjamin Cheyenne Whitney. Jimmy Wendt selects USS Germantown in a Sesamo, Japan. Next to pick, Benjamin Ryan Rapata. Benjamin Rapata selects USS Kid out of San Diego, California. Next up, Benjamin Nicholas Galanos. Benjamin Galanos selects you as his boxer in San Diego, California. Up now, Benjamin Grace Dalton. Benjamin Dalton selects you as his Carl Vincent in San Diego, California. Next up, Benjamin Nicholas Dubin. Benjamin Dewey selects USS Kidd out of San Diego, California. Next up, Benjamin Marissa Leon. Benjamin Leon selects USS Simpson out of Mayport, Florida. Up next, Benjamin Weston Kennedy. Benjamin Kennedy selects you as a San Diego and a San Diego, California. Up now, Benjamin Elizabeth Rubin. Benjamin Rubin selects you as a New Orleans and a San Diego, California. Next, Benjamin Shaw Murphy. Benjamin Murphy selects USS Lavelle in Norfolk, Virginia. Next to select, Benjamin Ivan Subialdi. Subialdi selects USS Parker Hill out of Norfolk, Virginia. Up next, Benjamin Bryce Boyer. Benjamin Boyer selects USS Calvins. I was saying, yeah, California. Was it Roller? Damn it. Next up, Benjamin Amanda Parsons. Benjamin Barson selects USS Abraham out of Everett, Washington. Up next, Benjamin Daphne White. Benjamin White selects USS Decatur out of San Diego, California. Just select 
those ships. Could you please introduce yourselves? I'm Trey Ann Wingate, 17 Company, and I chose the USS Germantown in Sasquatch Pier. Okay. Hi, I'm Jill Dawson, 29 Company, and I, call, uh, I chose the USS Donald Cook out in Rhode Island. Okay. Um, what made you pick the Germantown? I picked the Germantown because I was looking at Japan as a platform for us to forward miles. And being forward deployed, I really look forward to getting out um, on deployments fast and uh, in and out instead of being on long deployments. Okay. And what are you looking forward to most about being on an LST? I think mostly getting that interaction with the Marines and doing all the humanitarian assistance. Okay. And what was your selection? Um, I was torn when I picked Florida because I've always wanted to go abroad. Uh, I was, went on a Florida flight cruise this summer and I loved it, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to continue that trend. Um, what I like most about it was the second question. Well, um, what made you choose that platform? Um, I, I'm looking forward to a smaller community, a smaller first command, uh, just get to know the ropes better and uh, work my way up from there. Okay. Um, what are you most excited about going out to the fleet, getting to your first ships? I think just the challenge of meeting new people and really having people that work hard for you and you work hard for them. And what about you? Uh, I think about the same thing. It's rather daunting when you're looking at it, especially coming straight from here. Um, it's definitely going to be a total life change, and we're, I think we're ready for it. I think we'll do well. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, we're going to take it back to the auditorium to see the rest of this ship selection. The ship and Rubio selects USS New Orleans out of San Diego, California. But now, the ship and Taylor Sinus. Shipments that has selects USS Russell out of San Diego, California. Up now, it's shipment Matthew Wolford. It's shipment Wolford selects USS Mitchell out of Norfolk, Virginia. Next to select, it's shipment Patrick Taylor. Jim and Taylor selects USS San Antonio out of Norfolk, Virginia. Up now, the Jim and Paul Winston. The Jim and Winston selects USS Rodney and Davis out of Everett, Washington. Up now, the Jim and Barclay Walter. The Jim and Walter selects. USS Greater LCS Crew 101. Up now, it's Shipman Michaela Nault. It's Shipman Nault selects USS Carl Vinson out of San Diego, California. I'm here with Vice Admiral Michelle Howard. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Absolutely. Uh, what do you think about tonight's part? Oh, it's 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 inspirational, the enthusiasm, and the uh, just the joy of watching these uh, midshipmen pick their ships and pick their future. Okay. And what was your ship selection like? Well, for one thing, it was very different. Uh, uh, ships had just opened up to women. Well, I was out in Atlas, so there were only seven ships available for women. Uh, and then everybody else was either going to be some black or intelligent, so I got the seventh of seven ship slots. So it was very exciting for me. So was that the ship that you wanted? I just wanted to get to sea. So it, it, compared to the opportunities the men had at the time, it was it was uh, just an elusive thing, it, it felt like. So it was wonderful to get that ship. Very cool. What do these swoops need to do in order to succeed in the fleet? Well, they're, 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 they have all the skill sets they need. They got them here. They're just going to have to practice leadership and management. They're going to be terrific. And a lot of these midshipmen are going to Hawaii and Japan. So what do they need to know about our rebalancing and our refocus to the Pacific when they get out there? The, uh, whether, whether they're engaged in Hawaii and Japan or in Rhode Spain, our ships are globally distributed.
just your mimic wobbling to flying, so it's making yourself a joke more flying ready. Your, your, your home port is where your ship's based out of, and you've got to be ready to go anywhere at a moment's notice. What advice would you have for them tonight? Have fun. It's a wonderful life. It's a wonderful career they've chosen, and they're going to be terrific leaders. They just need to have fun. Is, is there anything else you would like to add? Thank you so much for giving us some of your time, and I'll let you get back inside to go. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mitchell Water Selects, USS America, San Diego, California. Up now, Mitchell Ben Brennan Wyatt. Selects USS Care Sarge out of Norfolk, Virginia. Up next, it should be Jack Dabowski. Jimmy Dabowski makes USS Fort McHenry out of Bayport, Florida. It should be Brandon Clark. Elizabeth 
was like, shit, why? I should have lost it already. Or every class, you know. I should have been like, this is actually. I should have been like, this is actually. So we go home. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah. So Fox Billy, who's this case for her in Florida? But she can talk to him. She looks like she was this baton in Norfolk, Virginia. But she can talk to him. So the horse likes to use this greatly in Norfolk, Virginia. But she can treat like a ghost game. So the horse is like she's just pressed in on her armor. But she can be a just came on. So the game is like she's just a little bit of a system. I should have referred to Garcia. 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 I should have referred to She was a success for her world. But she had a casualty of seven. But she was a success for her world. But she had a success for her world. But she had an Andrew Miller. But she had a good success for her world. Robert. She makes some of shit. I should have shaped slacks. You must have been out of Norfolk, Virginia. I should have Spencer Wilson. So the job is like she was this way, so you have a big work for her. It should be real figures. It should be figures like she was this mobile bay out of San Diego, California. It should be Joyce Kim. It should be Kim Slice, who was this job in town out of Sasbo, Japan. I should have been telling you, Jim. 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 